Active Directory set up, um, we're going to take a look at one of the first basic operations that you would do uh, once that process is complete, and that would be uh, creating uh, user accounts and uh, global security groups for the purpose of assigning permissions uh, and creating access control entries on DA cells and, and also creating organizational units to organize things in AD. And we're specifically going to take a look at PowerShell commandlets uh, that, that can automate uh, and do batch processing of these tasks. But first off, let's take a look at the two graphical or GUI tools that we would use for this job. And the first one is Active Directory Users and Computers, or ADUC. And I have shortcuts here on my desktop but you would just find that in administrative tools once you install Active Directory. So if I open up ADUC, first off, notice that I see my domain and I always turn this option on advanced features, but if you don't, um, you know, there, there are certain things that, that won't show up that won't be available. For instance, I'll, I'll turn it off and I'm gonna create an organizational unit all right, which is just a container in AD. Notice there's this option, protect container from accidental deletion. Okay, and I will call this test of you. All right, just kind of showing you one of the key differences here. So I closed it and I reopened Active Directory Users and Computers. I don't have advanced features checked. Now, remember it had protect from accidental deletion. So what happens if I try to delete this? You do not have sufficient privileges to delete test OU. And that's by design, right? You know, I I went with a default option, in which case I don't want to allow the deletion of OUs um, without you know unticking that option. And that's that's a very good uh, you know feature in in Active Directory users and computers um, just to keep you from accidentally deleting things. But if if I go, notice that you know my options are limited because I'm not in advanced view mode. So I don't have like the object tab or, you know, the security options that I would want. And also let's see, let's, let's look at another difference here. I have domain admins. We made some domain admins here. So I'm, I'm just gonna open up a user account and look at properties here. And notice that, notice the number of tabs I have in this view, right? When I'm not in advanced view, okay? So in this case, if I wanted to edit attributes, I, I can't, there's no attribute tab. And if I wanted to see where I was in AD, I can't, there's, there's no object tab. So watch what happens when I change my view to advanced features, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to domain admins and right click in properties. And now I have additional tabs. See, I have an attribute editor and this lets me look at all the attributes. You know, basically these are just variables. Every user account is like an instantiation of a class type object like we talked about in our videos on PowerShell. And so these are the attributes, right? The data members of that class of object. Now this is available and I can edit it because I, I enabled advanced view. Another tab that wasn't there before is the object tab. And this is useful because I can quickly see where something is in Active Directory. So here's my domain, and then here's the parent organizational unit, and there's no child OU. There's just the object itself, right? Another uh, key difference, if I right click on this OU and bring up properties, look at the extra tabs I have in advanced view. All right, and I can go to the object tab, and now I can unselect protect object from accidental deletion, click apply, and now when I try to delete it, it will actually allow me to do so. Okay, so I don't know why I brought that up first, but I would enable advanced features under view because that gives you a lot more functionality with Active Directory users and computers. But we can do basic tasks here. Like again, if I wanted to create an organizational unit, which you can think of like a folder, almost for, for organizing things in Active Directory. And you can apply different group policies at different levels, at the domain level or at the OU level, or at a, a child OU nested within a parent OU. 
And we'll do a series of videos on group policy and, and the PowerShell that goes along with that. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna call this like a parent OU. And I'm gonna create another OU inside it and I'll call it a child OU. All right. And if you went through that series of videos we did on PowerShell, we did it as an underscore. If you went through that series of videos we did on PowerShell, we did a whole series of, of videos on uh, inheritance hierarchies. When we were talking about classes and class structure, well, that is a very uh, important theme in the design of Active Directory. Active Directory is a very object-oriented structure you know, all right, um, in the way it was coded and the way it was developed. And it takes advantage of inheritance and an inheritance hierarchy. So I can have a parent OU and a child OU. And if I created an object, I'm going to go here and I'll make a user. Let's call this test user one. All right. And Just a super magical, super duper password. All right. So if I were to look under the object tab, you can see how inheritance works, right? Here's the parent domain, battlestars.fleet. Uh, that's the parent domain. The parent OU is this first OU out here at this level. And then the child OU is the OU nested inside of it. And then inside of that child OU, is my new user object, test user, okay? And this, this video, or series of videos, is just gonna be about creating and manipulating um, global security groups, organizational units, and user accounts. So we're not gonna go into group policy. But later, when we get into group policy and, and what we can do and how we can code it with PowerShell and, and, and manipulate it also with GUI tools, then we'll look at inheritance and how inheritance works when you have one o OU or organizational unit nested inside of another, okay? And so I could have a set of users in this OU that has a different group policy applied to them than a set of users in this OU. And, you know, I might put my administrators here or I might put, you know, my standard users here. You know, it, it depends on how you structure it, right? Um, so another series of videos, but I just wanted to give you an idea of, of graph. This, this is a GUI or graphical tool of how we could create an organizational unit and how we could create a user account. And if we wanted to, we can make a security group right here. So new, and I'm gonna create a group. Notice my options are global and security. For the purpose of assigning permissions in Active Victor Users and Computers or Active Victor Administrative Center, you usually want a global security group. Okay, and I'm going to call this um, child OU admins. That's what we'll call it. Okay, make that a capital. And then what I could do, either way, I could go here and under members, I could add test user. And if I just type in the first few characters and click check names, look, there it is, test user one. All right, so I added test user to this group and I can add other users to this group and then I can assign permissions either via group policy or as access control entries on a DSL. If these words seem confusing or if you're new to Active Directory, don't worry. We're going to do separate videos on all those topics. For now, we're just focused on this one little piece, right? Creating users, creating groups, creating organizational units. So don't worry about the rest of the stuff. We're going to hit that in separate videos later. We have to break this elephant up into bite-sized pieces, right? We can't try to eat the whole thing at one time. So don't worry if I'm, if I'm using terms that you're not familiar with or if you're new to Active Directory. We will come back to those terms and we will focus on them in, in much more detail in later videos, okay? But just know that a, a global security group, it's a way where you can add users to a group and then you can assign permission to that group and it's, it's, it's a very useful structure in AD because you can change permissions on just that one group and you can affect dozens or hundreds or even thousands of users just by changing permission on that one group. So we have multiple members. 
and that shows up under the members tab on a group or if I click on a user object and I open that up there's a member of tab and notice now that I've added my test user right um to the child OU admins he also shows up being a member of that group so you can get at or manipulate group membership either way from the group object itself or from the user object itself. And the same goes for computers, okay? Any computers or workstations I add to my Active Directory domain, they would show up here as a computer object. There aren't any because I haven't added any yet, but they would be here, okay? And same thing for domain controllers, okay? And I can create groups and add computer objects to security groups. And then the same thing, any permissions, any group policies that I applied to that group would apply to all the computers or all the users, you know, whatever objects were added to that group. So groups are a very powerful tool if used effectively in Active Directory along with inheritance. And that's just Active Directory users and computers. Now, another important graphical or GUI tool that you can use to manipulate and create user accounts and security groups and organizational units in AD is ADAC, or the Active Directory Administrative Center. Um, they both do the same things to a certain extent, but they each have their, their niche uh, in terms of usefulness. ADAC definitely has a lot more features than ADAC or Active Directory users and computers. But in my opinion, using ADAC is, it can be a lot faster. You can navigate around much more quickly in ADAC. If, if what you need to do is simple and to the point, you can get to it faster in Active Directory users and computers. So personally, I hope they never deprecate uh, or retire this tool. But anything you can do in ADAC, you can also do in ADAC and more. There's so many more features and bells and whistles in the Active Directory Administrative Center. It's just, to me, not as quick to navigate or to get around it, because sometimes those extra features, those bells and whistles can slow you down. Um, but in this tool, if I wanted to, I could look for a user. So I'm gonna go down to global search and I'll type in test. I'm gonna find our test user, right? Now, one of the cool things about ADAC, um, if I click this tab down here, see where it says expand and Windows PowerShell history? That's kind of cool. And then if I choose show all, I'm gonna check this option. Notice it gives me the PowerShell commands and the attributes of each of them that are, you know, that are basically being run. You know, basically when you use these graphical GUI tools, they're simply calling PowerShell commandlets in the background. And they're sort of hiding that from you. But um, again, I think this makes the, the case for the usefulness of learning PowerShell. And there's a whole series of videos that we just went through on PowerShell and learning the what, basically what's under the hood, you know, inheritance, which is a theme that's used over and over in Active Directory. Well, that's also a theme in object-oriented programming, in C++ and in Java and in C Sharp and in PowerShell. So the idea of inheritance and child objects and parent objects and and propagating permissions or an object inheriting permissions from its parent. That idea is central to Active Directory. And the cool thing about this GUI tool is you can actually see the PowerShell commands that it's running in the background. And it can be useful when you're scripting something if, if you're not quite sure what commandlet you need to call or use or what argument you need to set. Then you can do a, an operation in ADAC and not always, it doesn't always give you what you need, but a lot of times you can get that commandlet from ADAC and then incorporate it into your script. Kind of, you know, looking at the syntax and the structure and so forth. But I, that is one of, one of the features I like very much about um, Active Directory Administrative Center, ADAC. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that off and close that up again. But So that, that's definitely different from ADUC, right? But there's also some other interesting things. Notice that here, I can disable the account. I can reset the password. Um, I can bring up properties. There's a property sheet and there's a lot of things here that are attributes of the account, the display name, the first and last name, SAM account name, the UPN, right? The user principal logon name. I get all of those attributes, organization, 
member of, I'm just gonna click through these password settings, whether the account's locked or not, to unlock the password, reset the password, password never expires. Just look at some of the options here. Kind of go, go through it yourself, policy. And then what I want you to see is if I get down here to extensions, basically that's ADOC, right? So nested within ADAC is ADOC, Active Directory Users and Computers, because look, I can access the attribute editor and access individual attributes on that account, just as I could if I were an Active Directory Users and Computers. So another graphical or GUI tool, and again, you could search for another user account, right? So here's another user account and Same thing, go on the property sheets and so forth. Okay, so these are the kinds of things that we're gonna be automating and using uh, PowerShell to do you know, batch processing. I mean, if, if you've gotta do just one or two accounts, then the GUI tools are fine. Um, but when you need to do 100 accounts or dozens of accounts or, or 1,000 accounts or more, when you have to do a large batch of something, oftentimes these GUI tools are not adequate that's when you need the power of a scripting language. That's when you need the power of PowerShell. <laughs> and so we're gonna focus on learning some of the PowerShell commandlets that have to do with this portion of Active Directory. And we'll go into detail on other things later. We'll do a series of videos on group policy and look at the PowerShell to manage and manipulate that and go deeper into inheritance. We've already talked about that in PowerShell, but we'll talk about how that is in, in within the structure of AD itself as well. And we'll do other videos on things like DNS configuration and DHCP. And there, there are so many aspects to Active Directory. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of a Swiss army knife of network services, and there's a lot to it. And if we made a thousand videos, we wouldn't cover it all. Good grief. So we have to pick just a few things to focus on, right? In each video, we have to we have to break it up into bite-sized pieces instead of trying to eat that elephant all at one time. So now that we've seen the graphic tools, the GUI tools, let's look at the shell commands.